I've arranged for the Parkins family to come meet me here at Got Reptiles. We're gonna be meeting some reptiles and seeing which one Annika likes the most for her own pet. I've been doing a reptile camp for kids every summer, and Elliot was one of the first kids that, uh, that came to camp. Uh, his sister couldn't wait to join him. It's really cool seeing the effect that things like camps and, and what I do have on these kids because he's become so passionate about reptiles to the point where he got his own blue tongue skink, and now it's Annika's turn. Hey, guys. Hi, Hi Jason. Jason. How's it going? Great. Super excited. You're super excited. Oh, yes. Yeah. I understand we're going to go for some dinosaur theming? Yeah. Yes. Jurassic right. Park, to be exact. Jurassic Park, yeah. good choice. Yeah. So I thought maybe we could look at some like dinosaurish lizards that would really tie in with what you're looking for for a theme. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. I'm going to be really evil, and I'm going to tempt you right off the bat. Oh. <gasps> wow. So this is a blue tree monitor, uh, which is found in Indonesia. And he likes to be up high. So maybe we'll do this. Stay. <laughs> uh, they're very intelligent animals. Can I hold him? Sure. Now, he's probably going to climb on you, but uh, if we put our hands out, he'll sit. There we go. What does he eat? So he is an insectivore, so you're going to be looking at things like crickets, superworms, hornworm caterpillars. And it's quite fascinating to watch hunt, because you can see like him thinking and watching them, and he almost kind of strikes at them like a snake. Oh, cool. This guy be fully grown? Pretty close, yeah. Oh, amazing. Can I try holding him now, Annika? Yeah. Very easy. Oh. Oh, they're so cool. Oh, here, buddy, do you want to come on me? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That is awesome. If it was my reptile, I would go with the blue tree, just because I love how um, they're interactive, looking around, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. Loves to climb, not afraid to climb on me, on the kids. <laughs> Daddy's on top. He's on top. Just don't want him to jump. Oh, oh. Exactly what he was going to do. <laughs> All right, I have a kind of a cool one over here I want to show you guys. OK. Let's see. Oh, man, fast. They can be, yeah. Oh. So this is a Mexican spiny tail iguana. Ooh. And you can see how he gets his name because he has a rough spiny tail. Yes. They will use that tail as defense. It doesn't really hurt to touch it, but certainly you get some momentum by that, and it's going to sting. Compared to the green iguanas, green iguanas oftentimes can be very, very defensive, very territorial. These guys tend to have less issues with being like that. And as well, added bonus, he's a herbivore. They average out about four feet. Big. Yeah. I think a four-foot iguana, I think that's a big ask. Yeah. <laughs> we have a four-foot dog, I think that's enough. So one more prehistoric pet I'd like to show you guys. Wow. So this is a Baja blue lizard. So, named because Baja Peninsula, and what color is he? Blue. 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 And that blue actually gets even stronger and brighter during mating season. So these guys are a desert animal. So it would be a bit of a different setup than the other ones we looked at. It would be more hot, dry, uh, arid, uh, with lots of rocky crevices for him to climb around in and hide. Very, very quick, so that's something you'd have to adjust, with, adjust to. But he does settle. He's, uh, he's pretty calm in my fingers right now. Very soft lizard, and uh, you need to have a firm yet gentle grip on her because she's gonna bolt if uh, yes. if you give her the opportunity. Okay. Oh wow. <gasps> Amazing. Seems like they like you, Annika. That was pretty yeah. fast. You just get it in your hand. She's really soft. Feel dead. Oh, what a oh, beautiful yeah. oh, look! Amazing. What do you think? Really soft. Yeah. And they're really beautiful. She's a really dinosaur-like face, too. Oh, totally, yeah. And how much larger would they get? Up to about 18 inches. Mom, Dad, can I get her? She's beautiful. Is this the one? Yes. Yeah? And what are you, what's her name going to be? Blue. Oh. Good choice. She's amazing. Now you got a blue wizard, and I got a blue tongue skink. So we both got blue wizards. Because I know your history and your experience with reptiles, I'm going to say this is going to be a good choice. You guys are going to do a bit of homework, and we're definitely going to build the right cage for her. Oh, that would be amazing. Oh, hey, Emma. I got something cool to show you. You want to see? Yeah. I'm really excited about these guys. I, ju I just got them in from Europe.
So what do you think this is, Emma? Oh, kind of looks like a snake, but then the face looks different. It kind of looks like something you would see on a lizard. Correct. So these are actually European legless lizards. Oh. The European legless lizard comes from a wide geographical range, spanning from the Balkan Peninsula to Turkey and Syria, all the way to Central Asia. Legless lizards can't climb like snakes can, and they avoid water. Their habit is to hide under leaves and burrow under soil. So some of the ways we can tell that they're lizards, even though they move very similarly to snakes, one, if we watch carefully, at some point, they're gonna blink. And snakes don't have eyelids, right? Yeah. Yeah, and if you actually look at the side of his head as well, right here on each side, how there's a little hole, what are the holes on the side of your head? Ears? Ears, and snakes don't have external ears either. And then the other interesting thing is see how they have this line down their body? Yeah. And it kind of ends right there? Yeah. All of this is tail. Wow. So whereas a snake, the tail will be like about here, right? So that's some of the physical differences. Another big difference, how does a snake eat? They swallow, they swallow it down. Right, and they dislocate their jaw, right? Yeah. Lizards don't have the ability to dislocate their jaw, so I actually brought some worms. And we're gonna see if these guys might be interested in, uh, in having a snack. Go ahead, eat it. You missed. Yeah, that's not something a snake would do. No. All they have is their mouth in order to eat. Yeah. So how come they don't have legs? You know what, that's a really good question. There's actually many, many different species of legless lizards found throughout the world, including in the United States. And a lot of them actually do have uh, little numbs that look like they might have had legs at one time. It's just the way they've evolved. A lot of the benefits that snakes have, being able to go through tight spaces or small spaces, being able to stay low to the ground, uh, their way of movement, that's just the way these guys have evolved. Thanks for showing me these, they're really cool. No problem, I agree, Emma. This is a really cool animal and I'm glad that you're in the shop today that I could show them to you.